Hi everyone, Assalamualaikum. So today in this video, we are going to talk about reliability tests. So when do we conduct reliability tests? We conduct reliability tests before we collect our data. This is because um, testing for reliability is very important um, before you use the scales. Okay, whenever you adapt the scale or you adopt a scale or even if you create your own scales, you still need to check for the scale's reliability. Um, this is to ensure that the items used in that particular scale um, hangs together or actually measures the same underlying construct. All right? um, we're going to talk about the threshold for reliability test. Um, the common threshold is going to be alpha should be more than 0.7 as according to Develis 2012. I believe hair also suggested an alpha of more than 0.7 but if your alpha is um, lower than 0.7 probably it's going to be um, 0.6 and above you can definitely find um, scholars um, that supports that alpha threshold probably it's unique for your scales or it's unique for your own research project um, it depends on the research study itself but the general convention is that more than 0.7 is already good enough but your alpha scores cannot be close to one um, as in it cannot be more than 0.95 um, that's going to indicate um, that you have um, items that is actually repetitive or is actually the same the same thing okay it's actually measuring the same thing so this are uh, the alpha threshold that i was talking about so this indicates poor reliability but of course it depends on your study um, as you can see over here um, 0.80 to 0.95 is a very good reliability and an alpha that is too high may raise suspicions okay so this is according to Zygmunt. You can also refer to Hare. You can also refer to Develis. You can also refer to other statistical scholars. All right. So I'm going to show you an example of how do we conduct a reliability test. Um, we conduct this according to our scale. So don't chunk all of your scales together. If you have, For example, if you have 30 items measuring um, five, five different variables, right? Don't chunk all your items together. But instead, you need to do it per variable. This is because that item measures a specific variable. So if you chunk all together, it doesn't make any sense at all, right? So you click on analyze. Um, first, um, I'm using the survey number four data set. You can find this in the Google Classroom. Um, click on analyze, go to scale, go to reliability analysis, right? So why am I doing this before um, I'm talking about the inferential statistics well it's because these are the um, analysis that you need to conduct before running your um, descriptive before running your inferential so you run reliability tests first okay and then you click on statistics um, you want all of this items here item scale scale if item is deleted in the item we want both right and then just click continue you can name the la label so okay no worries so here are our results so this is what we want to see okay you can take a look at the case processing summary and see whether all your cases are correct it's true whether your um, n equals to 4 uh, th 36 or 39 okay Um, let's take a look at the Cronbach's alpha. So we have a very good Cronbach alpha of 0.89 um, and number of items is 5. Definitely we have 5 um, items for the life satisfaction scale. Okay, The mean score is also given here and these are the inter-item correlation matrix. Okay, so let's take a look at the item total statistics. Um, you have here this is very important over here um Cronbach alpha is if item is deleted say for example your Cronbach alpha is not 0.89 probably it was 0.67 or something you can take a look at the list here under item total statistics take a look at the Cronbach's alpha if item is deleted and you can see whether if you delete one item it can increase your alpha scores or not so so normally if you have a negative inter-item correlation, um, corrected item total correlation, um, it tells you that 
you have probably have an item that is reverse coded but you didn't reverse code it okay so if you have a negatively worded item and you did not reverse code that item and you just simply run um, reliability test it's, it's gonna show all right and it's gonna mess up with your reliability scores so that is all for reliability tests. It's, it's fairly easy. If you have five variables, you conduct five times of reliability um, analysis, right? Reliability scores. So you can see here, the corrected item total correlation, um, if it's lower than 0.3, then, then that particular item is measuring something different than the scale as a whole. Um, okay, so you can see over here. So let's try another example. Um, So again, so we don't want to test um, the life satisfaction. Let's try the optimism, okay, the optimism score. From the scale itself, I know that some of the items are reverse coded how do i know um you need to go back to the data itself you need to go back to the survey questions and see what, what questions are reverse coded okay so in this data i already know that our op, um, optimism two four and six is actually reverse coded so i need to remove two four and six and replace them with the reverse coded r two four and six so everything is still um is already ticked. So this is not life satisfaction, but this is optimism. Um you have a Cronbeck alpha of seven nine seven point seven nine seven, which is good enough because it's already more than 0.7, right? It's already more than 0.7. So let's take a look at the item total corrected item total correlation. Everything is more than 0 0.03, uh sorry, 0.3. And if you don't need to drop anything to increase your alpha because your alpha is already your chromebook alpha your inter item correlation is already good enough so that is all for reliability analysis how do we write down a reliability analysis um this is how okay typically it's reported under method section of course because it should be under instrument development okay you need to show that the instruments that you use are reliable and after describing the scale, include a summary of um, reliability information reported by previous authors. Okay, so for example, it's like this. According to um, um, previous authors, the satisfaction with life scale has good internal consistencies with Cronbeck alpha of 0.85. In this study, the Cronbeck alpha coefficient was 0.89. Okay, thank you.